3. First of all, when we read Ecclesiastes, we realize it's like human philosophy under the sun. And that's a good thing. Uh, the, the Bible is amazing because um, we have this, this above life that Jesus spoke about. I am from above, you are from below. And then we have uh, God allows us to think and process life without that above life. Without that above life, we look at life and try to understand it naturally. But we are very limited. We come to the end. And there's a number of verses in Ecclesiastes that say that. Um, in chapter 3, and then um, 8, um, 17... One well known one in my my life, then I beheld all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. Because though a man labors to seek it out, yet he shall not find it, the yea farther, though a wise man thinks to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. So philosophers, wise men, I think they know it, they're not able to find it. I believe it was Francis Schaeffer that called that the uniform field of knowledge where everything is in a context and um, it's, there, there's behind everything we observe there's a uniformed um, field of understanding that puts everything in context but we can't find it because it's above so how can I find that which is above by looking at the things below? The things below are indicators that there is something above. That's Romans 1, 19, 20. This is the invisible things of the world. The invisible things, the things above, are clearly seen by the things that are seen. The trees, the animals, the insects, the the uh, biosphere, the the various systems of water and clouds and ocean and rivers, and um, and that we are hungry for why we are here. We we can study what is here, but actually, why are we here? We cannot find it without the the life from above. So that. The introductory comments for Ecclesiastes 3 when you look at death. It says in verse 19, For that which befalls the sons of men befalls beasts. Even one thing befalls them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. So you see a bird that's dead under a tree or a roadkill, one you see animals die and the same with man he dies the same way it looks as if it's the same yea they have all one breath so that a man has no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity is there any difference between the roadkill and man isn't it look the same yes all go under one place. Really? Well, the material body goes to one place, the grave, or back to the biosphere, but then, and all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knows the spirit of man that goes upward, and the spirit of the beast that goes downward to the earth? Who knows what happens to the spirit? Does the spirit of man go up and the peace go down? Is there a difference? This is, we, we don't see it. We don't know. Um, uh, then it says, Wherefore I perceive, verse 22, that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion, for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him. So, he kind of resigns himself to the world that's below. And he just says, I, I see 
because I can't see what is coming after. I see it's just the best for me to rejoice in my work, in my paycheck, in my, my lunch, in my friends, in my golf game. I perceive there's nothing for me to do but simply live this life that is below. That's the limitation of the natural heart and mind. And so many people live like that. Now comes Christ. Now comes the revelation of the word of God. That now we see that which is above. Colossians 3.1 Now we are believers in the transcendent life. Now we are we are looking at the world and saying, yes, there, there is more. There is the resurrection. Our bodies will be raised from the grave. Philippians 3.20 Our sins are forgiven. Our name is in the book of life. We will be with Christ and our, our friends who believe in the kingdom, in the city, whose builder and maker is God. We understand this. And we have a mission. We have a mission in this world to show people that life is more than what we see. Life is love. Life is joy and peace. And mission and faith. And Noah built an ark and Abraham left home and Moses left Egypt and all of us have a story and Deborah and Samson and John the Baptist and Jesus and Paul. We all have a message. We all have a, a ministry and, and a mission. And I uh, thank God for those laboring in the fields today. Manny and the team in California, Chris Moore and the team in Houston upstate New York, Canada. Thank God for Latin America, for Costa Rica, Mexico, the islands. Thank God for the new work. Perhaps this summer I know again, Bolivia. And um, wherever you have a group of people, and don't you love people? Don't we love it that they are hungry for the message of Christ? Let's labor to bring people to Christ. Encourage them in the faith. Show them the Bible is the word of God and lead them in their in faith. Yes, by sight it looks like we die like animals. But in fact, we leave our body, our spirit goes to God, our soul and spirit. We are given a temporary body until we get our resurrection body 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 2, and um, that day is coming. Yeah. Lord, thank you for your grace toward us, your peace, for the message of grace, for the mission of Christ on the earth. He was here showing us, and he was raised and he shows us clearly. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.